Hi, hello, good afternoon, good morning. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about listening. So if you're in my How to Be an Effective Communicator and Speaker course, right now in the first week we are talking about active listening. And listening has been such an important component of how to be a good communicator, how to be a good public speaker. I feel like listening, specifically active listening and being a good listener, is the baseline, it is the building block of being a good communicator. I, do, I, I firmly believe that you cannot be a good communicator, you can't be a good public speaker if you haven't first learned the basics, and that is listening. So a few tips, I know we've talked a lot about active listening tips, we've talked about listening skills 101, um, I've given you, you know, some worksheets on paraphrasing, how to respond back to people. Um, but I really want to talk about some some books and some things that have helped me to grow because this is a learnable skill, okay? I don't want you guys to have that defeatist thinking or that either you are good at this or you're not. These are things that we learn over time. These are people skills that we learn and things that we can learn to improve about ourselves. So I know I said it in, in one of my training emails, but the first thing I'm going to urge you to do is to stop thinking that you're a great listener, okay? Immediately, if someone tells me that they are a great listener, I know that they're not. It's just, it's just the way it is, okay? We all have room to improve, and I think every person overestimates their ability to listen. And I've done this over and over with role-playing and coaching, when I have observed conversations between two people, when I'm coaching people in sales business, or even in my old public relations business, um, in my observations, what I can see is that there's a lot of talking over, there's a lot of um, only listening in order to say what you wanna say, and only listening in order to talk about yourself or talk about what you wanna sell or talk about your product or talk about the point you wanna get across instead of truly, truly active listening. So my first book, um, and this is not just for communication, this is not just for public speaking, this is for life. If you're doing something that deals with people, you have heard me talk about this book over and over and over, and I've probably read it 20 times by now, um, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um, in this, one of his main principles is letting the other person do the bulk of the talking, okay? And this is really important. I think people think that they have to get more words in. Like in order to win a conversation or win an argument like or, or be persuasive, they need to be the one doing all the talking, and it's the opposite. The person doing less talking is the one on the winning side of a conversation. If you're gonna look at it as winning and losing, you don't learn when you're talking, okay? You're learning nothing new when words are coming out of your mouth. Absolutely nothing is being gleaned. You are learning and you are learning how to help serve or help someone or make someone better or how to communicate to them when you're listening. So the person learning is the person winning. And so really look at your conversations. I hear again, a lot of times um, people will say, hey, can you read this over? Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? And I'm like, what you're doing wrong is you're doing 75% of the talking. That's what you're doing wrong. So really this book, and there are so many other things um, in this book that focus on listening, but this is basic people skills 101. And I'm finding that people think they're great listeners when they just don't have the basic people skills down. This is a book that will take you through a lifetime. A lot, like this book is like 80 years old and the concepts in here still apply today. All right, my second one that I wanna talk about is how to listen with intention. You can see like I have my um, my 19 year old has been reading this. I've read it a bunch. He read, has read, read it and absolutely loves it too. We love talking about personal development in my family, but really this is about building true connections, communication and relationships. And the biggest stumbling block, the reason why most relationships don't work, it's not money, it's not sex, it's not all these other things, it's communication, okay? People are so afraid to communicate or they don't know how to properly communicate, they don't feel confident to communicate, and so they let they allow feelings or anger or other things to dictate things instead of just properly communicating, and they don't listen. If you really get adept to act, act, active listening, you're gonna make someone feel so valued, so important, so special, that it's going to improve your relationships, and it does, okay? So I really like this one because it talks about the science behind things. I'm a why person. Now you may just be like, I'm like, hey, these are the things you need to do to be a better active listener, and you do them. I'm not. I need to know the science. Why do I need to listen? How does it make my relationships better? How does, and so this really gave me a lot of backdrop on why I need to be a better listener. And I, it was very humbling for me to read this because I realized how many things I was doing wrong. And so there is no word in the human language 
that is more satisfying for someone than their own name. Remember that, okay? Someone talking about themselves or you asking them questions, there is nothing out there, including their children, that people would like to talk about more than themselves. And so we can use that to help serve on and love and get information from people because we can't communicate to them if we don't know what, the, what it is that they need or how to properly talk to them. So um, how to listen with intention is like an incredible book that I would highly, highly recommend um, in order to improve your active listening. And again, these aren't things I was born with. You can see that I do, uh, I do a lot of work to get good on this communication part of my life. And last is um, Daniel Coleman's emotional intelligence. And listening is not just, okay, I heard what you said, basically paraphrasing it back. That's half of the equation. If you're, if you're a really good listener and you're active listening, it's about how you make someone feel. Active listening should leave someone feeling valued, important, like they were heard. And I'm not just talking with your ears, like you really understand what they're saying. You don't have to agree with them, okay? That's the thing. You don't have to agree with what they're saying. What they're saying doesn't have to be right, but you can absolutely make some, allow someone the privilege of walking away feeling better than when they came to you. So yes, the really important part about active listening is how you walk away after, how you leave someone feeling once you've done it, okay? And so um, just some examples of, of listening when it comes into play, like with public speaking. Um, when you're up as a public speaker, if you're giving a presentation, whether it's at a board meeting, whether it's with your supervisors, I have been given, you know, giving presentations in front of 300 people. It's not always going to be easy. You can't predict humans, okay? And so, for example, um, let's just say you have someone that repeatedly ke keeps interrupting or repeatedly maybe is interjecting or arguing with some facts that you're presenting in your presentation. So it can be really easy to be flustered with something like that, right? And, and prepare for that. We'll talk about reading body language. We're going to get into it. We have a whole bunch more to cover in this in this course. But really when it comes down to it, I try to not just see the words that are coming out of this person's mouth, but I think, what do they really need? And sometimes it's about active listening and, and putting your ego aside, right? Maybe you feel really dumb during the presentation. Maybe you just need to give this person some extra time. Maybe they're feeling like they're unheard. Maybe they're angry because no one has come to speak to them about this. Maybe they're having an emotional reaction to what you're presenting because it goes against their beliefs. So really not always just looking at the words that someone is telling you, but deeply trying to understand and come, come at them with emotional intelligence and with empathy and, and think to yourself, Okay, what are they really saying? They're saying these words, yes, granted, but what are they? Re what do they really need? And that has been, uh, it has been so helpful for me in public speaking, especially with large groups, especially in sales. Again, you're going to get a lot of objections, um, limiting beliefs from people, and they may say, you know what, I would love this, but I just, I don't have the money. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes you have to ask questions. You have to really get to know someone. Maybe they're fearful. Maybe they failed in the past. Maybe maybe it's fear holding them back. It could actually not be money at all. They could be telling you one reason, but you need to do better active listening. You need to ask more questions. You need to actually spend time getting to know someone and listening to what they're saying in order to listen to the things that they're not saying as much as the things that they are saying. And the more that you work on active listening, the better you get at that discernment and understanding what's being said, but also what isn't being said.